Hey everyone, today I want to talk a little about American Deaf History. It is a subject that not a lot of people really know about unless you've taken American Sign Language 1, um, Deaf History, Deaf Culture, possibly Child Development. But anyways, Deaf History is something that is a part of America's history that really helped with us finding equality and has really affected the attitude against cultural discrimination. And it is still going on today. Activists today are still trying to provide better and equal opportunities for those with disabilities, those who are deaf and hard of hearing. So I hope you enjoy my presentation and yeah. There's no wonder why the deaf American community is so proud of their history and background, and it is due to all the hardships and accomplishments that they have achieved throughout the years. However, deaf history unfortunately focuses on the centuries-long struggle over discrimination by the hearing world, and striving to provide better and equal opportunities and rights for the deaf community around the world. Thomas H. Gallaudet was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on December 7, 1787. He was a hearing American and was said to be in poor health most of his life. He suffered from frequent nightmares, nervous attacks, and a deep sense of inadequacy, leading a life full of commitment to moral, religious, and philanthropic duty. He persuaded the Connecticut legislator and rich private donors to fund the establishment of the first public school for instruction of the deaf in the United States. In 1821, Gallaudet married a former academy student, Alice Fowler. She became a prominent figure in the deaf community, and their son Edward would find the Washington School that would become Gallaudet University. Across the Atlantic, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to Le Bon, France, is Laurent Clark. Laurent Clerc was born in December 26, 1785, in Le Bon, France. He became deaf at the age of one when a high chair in which he was sitting in accidentally toppled into the fireplace. He became a deaf teacher from Paris, and then the first deaf teacher of the deaf in America. Throughout his career, Clerc taught and trained many future teachers and administrators, hearing and deaf, greatly influencing the deaf education and the establishment of schools for the deaf in the United States. In 1815, Clark met Thomas Gallaudet while giving a lecture in England and invited Gallaudet to visit Paris. The following year, Clark accompanied Gallaudet to Hartford, Connecticut. On the long trip across the Atlantic, Gallaudet learned sign from Clark and Clark learned English from Gallaudet. In April 1817, and with the assistance of Dr. Mason F. Cogswell and others, they established the Hartford Asylum for the Education and Instruction of the Deaf and Dumb, the first permanent public school for the deaf in the United States. The Hartford Asylum later became the American School for the Deaf. Ever since Laurent Clark and Thomas Gallaudet first met in 1817 to start the America's first school for the deaf, the establishment of sign language has flourished to such an amazing degree and continues to do so today. The 1880 Milan Conference was held in Italy and was considered one of the biggest pivotal moments in American Sign Language and Deaf Americans' history. The meeting was to vote for the prohibition of the use and teaching of sign language to deaf children. Instead, they wanted to implement the oral method, or oralism, and the use of lip reading and speech. Outside, teachers who supported sign language were blocked by opposing educators who believed that oral instructions for deaf students were better. Unfortunately, the International Congress of Education of the Deaf agreed to ban sign language, and consequently began the dark ages in schools for the deaf. Even Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone, was critical to the deaf society as mentioned in his address, Marriage and Address to the Deaf. He says, Those who believe, as I do, that the production of the defective race of human beings would be a great calamity to the world, will examine carefully the causes that lead to the intermarriage of death with the object of applying a remedy. But little did he know, two to three out of a thousand children in the United States are born deaf or hard of hearing. Nine out of every ten children who are born deaf are born to parents who can hear. Equal rights for the deaf community and freedom from cultural discrimination was at the forefront of every deaf activist's mind. But sadly, it took until the 1960s when the lack of social understanding and discrimination against deaf people began to dissipate thanks to the National Association of the Deaf and other organizations that helped the community become recognized within society. The National Association of the Deaf, or NAD, was established in 1880. The NAD is the nation's premier civil rights organization of, by, and for the deaf and hard of hearing individuals in the United States of America. The NAD worked through coalition efforts with specialized national deaf and hard of hearing organizations, as well as coalitions representing national cross disability organizations. Additionally, the NAD provides leadership camps for deaf children and youth, leadership and business training for deaf adults, and cultural activities for everyone in the community to increase awareness 
acceptance and appreciation for diversity. Internationally, the NAD represents the United States to the World Federation of the Deaf, or WFD, an international human rights organization. The NAD is also a nonprofit organization supported by the generosity of individuals and organizational donors, including corporations and foundations. Laws were created throughout history to protect the right to equality of men and women of all ethnic and cultural groups living in the U.S., and the ideal in which everyone is created equal. When it comes to the topic of general equality, most of us will readily agree that it is universally desired by everyone. The Rehabilitation Act of 1973 is a federal law that authorizes the formula grant programs for vocational rehabilitation, supported employment, independent living, and client assistance. Also includes a variety of provisions focused on rights, advocacy, and protections for individuals with disabilities, such as the Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act. It states that equal access must be given to people who have hearing or vision disabilities and accessible new construction and alterations in all federally funded facilities. Thus, when addressing equality, today many cases of disparity still exist, ranging from race, gender, class, and disability. Such cases go back to the beginning of America with the issues of freeing slaves, equal property rights, women's rights to vote, and into more recent matters such as regarding gay marriage. Whereas some Americans believe the U.S. has done all that it is possible to create equality in all matters important, others are convinced it is impossible to perfectly achieve such an idealistic society. In the deaf society, there is silent discrimination and continuous effort to provide better and equal opportunities and rights for deaf communities around the world.